Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Old School with you here. We're back with more Disney Infinity, and we are under construction. We've got Olaf to take us through the next portion of our build, and this is Snow Day. If you're new to this particular chapter of Under Construction, Snow Day is based off of, or inspired by, more accurately, a made-for-TV movie that you can probably check out anytime in the near future right now, and it is also called Snow Day, so... Some of the things in the movie made me think it would make for a simple and fun little toy box. And of course, uh, it's starting to get a little bit <laughs> away from me here as it's getting bigger and bigger. But uh, we're trying to keep it as simple as possible. So, a little more decorating taking place after we went off stream on the last build. So, just to see that we filled in some more with the forest and the trees leading up to the tree farm where we'll go Christmas shopping for a tree. And I showed you the map on the other side. Well, I did a lot more with that as well, including putting a bridge to join the two together. Uh, we're gonna drop one of these dudes in here in just a moment. And probably over here as well. But as you can see, I did a lot of decorating on this side here just to make the street look a little bit more uh, lined out, I guess, for lack of a better term, because the colors being so similar, it could be hard and you could lose your way going through here and staying on the track. So we put a few barriers up and things like that to help line out the actual track and the way it's going. We threw Luigi's Garage in here to occupy a large center section here. Put some other things down here. Something I do want to show you that uh, I did just to if I can drop in for aesthetics purposes I didn't like the way the rails just kind of went nowhere and ended and a lot of time if you see these types of rails on a highway when they get to the end what they'll do is they'll slope down and go into the ground well that's not an option with infinity but I thought okay well if I sink one of the snow banks down I can kind of get the illusion of that effect so that's what we've done on a several spots here and I like the way it looks and all we had to do for that is basically take one of the semi half globes there, put it onto a path creator, which you can see over here, and then just move it forward a little bit and down a little bit to get the desired effect. I'm not sure why I wasn't using Olaf for this whole build, because this is really his place. And we'll take a look at this end, too. And this one, I actually also merged it into the wall, which I really like this effect. Uh, I think this just makes it look a lot nicer than having the rails just end in the wall. Didn't seem realistic to me. So adding the snowbank like that, uh, or the snow drift. And then we have the truck over here, which is going to start the game on this side. So once you get into it, it will automatically launch you into the challenge of getting the snow cleared off the roads. And that's what we're gonna be working on now is the logic for the game. So, without any further ado, let's jump into it, shall we? Over here, we've got the logic laid out, a lot of it anyway, not all of it. So we've got all the snow that we're going to be using here, so far as the snow drifts and the snow banks. And it looks like we've got a total of 12, if I'm not mistaken, yes. This is just an extra that I'm going to probably use on the roadway here or something like that. So the plan is to use these 12. And then... The trigger areas will surround each one of them as we place them in. What we're also going to need at this point is to get into our creativity toys. I just went past. Bam. Nope. We're going to need counters. We're going to need replayers. Yeah. 
There's our counter. We'll just put him on the side for now. And then the replayer is going to be 12 of those, because one for each snowbank. Using Olaf to help us out here. We're going to start placing these things at random sections. So now, there you go. That snowbank is all set to go. We might also need buttons, but let me check something here. Whenever entered. What I really want is it to only enter when entered, or only want it activated when entered by a vehicle. And then we'll clear. So that's how you're going to actually plow the snowbanks. And let's make sure that works, though. Um, because sometimes replayers don't work well with trigger area commands. I don't know why. But there have been times where I've had no choice, <coughs> excuse me, but to uh, incorporate a button. Where am I at? This is what I want. So by me going through this, nothing should happen, and nothing does happen. And now, if it works... Yep, it did work. Okay. Then we should be good. Let's come back here. And play, and boom, it's back. And that's all we're going to be doing over and over again, so we'll probably fast forward uh, the part, this part of the video. And this is why I'm not doing a live build on this. It's going to be a lot of repeating the same steps over and over again. That doesn't generally make for a very exciting video. But we do want to stretch the box out so that it has a uh, pretty complete cover and that it'll activate moments before impact with it so that it gives the impression that you cleared it away. And then we're just going to place them around different areas of the map, and we will fast forward to that portion. Okay, so all of that's done now. I ended up going with just 11 because that really covered the map pretty well. And we'll take a quick look at where I placed them. Of course, put yours wherever you want. But uh, I kind of tried to balance it out a little bit so that there's a spot. And as I'm looking at it, I almost feel like I might want to put that 12th one back in right in this area here. So I think we'll do that. Okay, we're back now, and once again, we've got 12 of these snowdrifts that are spread out around the track. We'll take a look at where I've placed them, and of course, you can place them wherever you want to in yours. So, I try to keep everything pretty well balanced so that every road will have the opportunity to have a snowdrift that needs to be cleared. We're going to set this up to randomly spawn, therefore, I want you to have to think about the entire track could have probably put one back here, but it's at least got a few on different points of that roadway, so you'd still have to cover the whole area sometime in trying to accomplish the task. Whoa.
one of the things I want to point out is when you put these trigger areas down, you want to make sure there's a full block space around each point that you could possibly make impact with it at. This is the only way you're going to guarantee that it does clear when you're driving your vehicle through there and has enough time to get out of the way of the vehicle. Okay, as we take a look at the logic right now, all of these replayers represent a snowbank that we have to clear off the road. Now we bring in the randomizers. Now the thing about the randomizer is when you look at the properties, you have different triggers that will randomly select from. But it only goes up to 10, and we have 12. So what we're going to actually do is split them in half. So 6 on this randomizer. And then 6 will be attached to this randomizer. This randomizer will randomly select which one of these two starts getting pulled. So it is truly going to be as random as it gets. So I'll walk you through a little bit of what we're talking about. If you've never used a randomizer, it's what makes a game a lot more replayable because it will change it each and every time. Yes, the mission's going to stay the same, but where the snowbanks are going to pop up, we don't know. So if we go into our new logic connection, we're going to say when it randomly selects number one, that we'll take this one here, and we will play back. Now, as we did earlier... We want to test this because sometimes replayers are not the most cooperative of the uh, toys we have to work with here, especially when it comes to logic. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this should be the first block right here. We'll know that in a moment by just turning it off. And it is. Okay, we'll turn it back on. So the way we're going to test this is, A, we're going to turn it off. So the block is gone. That's the way the game will start with all the blocks will, will be turned off. Then randomly they'll be selected. Well, in this case, it's not much random because there's only one input there. So when I go to input, it's definitely going to be one right now because there's no other option. And if all works well, then that snow block should appear again. So let's test it out. New logic connection when pressed. We want it to roll the dice is what I say. And when I do that, it should give me, and it does. Okay, so it's all behaving properly thus far. And just to verify everything is working. And there we go. We have plowed our first snow. And we come back here again. And there it is again. Okay. So that is how the logic is going to work. And once again, I'm going to fast forward and take care of all this off stream so we don't waste a lot of time. Okay. So here's where we're at now. This button is going to start by throwing the randomizer to choose one of the other two randomizers. These first six snow banks here will randomly be selected. If it goes to that side, if it comes over here, it'll be one of these six randomly selected snow banks. And as we've already seen, they are scattered throughout the map. Okay, so now we're ready to start actually creating the game itself, and here are the majority of the things that we're going to be using to do that. So let's start putting together. So what we've got here is a scoreboard. I've already linked it to the challenge maker. Uh, I'm not sure you really have to do that. I just force a habit. We've got, in this case, a locator, and that is going to be the starting point for the game. Um, this will end up getting hidden below the surface, which is why I do that. If you want to keep yours above the surface, then you don't need this. But I like to hide all the logic below so we don't see it. Over here we've got our timer, so we're going to basically give you a set amount of time in order to achieve the highest score you can. Uh, but I want to say that we're going to have to have a minimum time, otherwise there's no success or failure in the game. And I think you have to have that, otherwise it's not really a game. And then the repeater over here, and the repeater is going to do is going to 
be the thing that keeps on pressing this button to get our randoms going. And let's start with that. So as we go into the properties of the repeater tool, this is right now every five seconds, it's going to send another pulse out. I'm thinking we might want to cut it down. To four. In the beginning, it's going to make a bigger issue than at the end, because as you're looking for that first snowbank, which could be anywhere on this big map, uh, another one will come in and another one will come in, and it'll actually be easier to find more as the game progresses. All right, so we're going to have the repeater every four seconds. So here's where we go to our logic connection. So when it repeats... It'll press that button. So every four seconds, it's going to press the button, which is going to press the first randomizer, which is then going to randomly select one of those two, which will then randomly select one of those six or one of those six snow blocks to appear. And then for four seconds, it won't do it again. Now, if you happen to get the first snow block within four seconds, then you're going to actually have to wait a few seconds for another one to appear. Could even be the one you just did. You don't know. And that's why it makes the game a little bit more replayable. Now we're going to need something to tell that to start. And that's where this comes in. So new logic connection is once the game has started, we turn it on. At the same token, when the game is either, we'll say completed, It'll go off, or if the game has failed, it will turn off. Either way, that'll end it at the end of the game. What I am thinking is instead of this, I think we are going to go with just a counter. This way we can set the time will be the challenge. To get in the best time will be the challenge, but I do think we have to have a count that you have to complete. So I'm going to go with a counter. Again, you can do it any way you want, but for me, I'm going to go with a counter. And we're going to see how much time do we want to put towards this. Set our properties on this. This is in seconds, so with 60 seconds in a minute... I'm going to go 120 for two minutes. So 120 seconds, two minutes. The time will be visible. Countdown from target time. Yes. So it's going to count down to zero. All right, we're going to go that route. So now two minutes. The question is how many snowbanks should we be able to collect in two minutes and still make sure it's a challenge? Well, that's going to come through trial and error. We'll play a few rounds of it and see if it's too easy or if it's too hard. But to guess and set things up right now, over the course of two minutes, over the whole map, let's start with 20. So our target count will be 20. And we can change that up or down depending how we feel. And everything else we set on target reach, I'll say yes, in case you want to replay the challenge, you can. And there's that. So now, new logic connection, when the target is reached, that means you've done it before the clock ran out, then we have completed the game, and it will stop everything else. Speaking of which, new logic connection... When the game is completed, because we've got our 20, we want to, I'm going to say pause. This way you can see how much time was on the clock and you'll know what your score is to be. Because at the end of the day, what you want to do is get it as fast as possible. That, that's going to be the record you're looking to set. Okay, so that turns that off. Another new logic connection. When the invite is accepted, we want to reset that. And that'll make sure that it's starting 
at zero, or in this case, two minutes counting down to zero. Okay, so let's see where we're at right now. We've got the game maker that's going to start the randomizer, not the randomizer, but the repeater, which will go to the randomizer. It will turn on and off the clock. It will be victorious on 20 count being reached and new logic connection here if the time expires so you didn't get 20 and the time ran out then the game has failed and I do believe I did game failure and win let me double check though Challenge Maker's got two, one, game completed. Yeah, that sounds, I think. Let me double check. When the game is failed. Nope, didn't. It wouldn't let you do it twice. Then we just go to reset. New logic connection again. When the invite is accepted, we will reset the scoreboard. And I believe we already said, but let me double check when the game has been completed. Yeah, you see how it won't let me do it again? We've already done that. And then let me make sure one other thing. New logic connection when the game has been failed. And again, it won't let me, so that means it's already happened. Okay. Um, starting the game, or at least giving you the invite, whenever this vehicle is entered, We will start the game. Which is why I, I, I'm trying to think here. Yeah, I'm still going to need that as a locator, again, for me, because I'm not going to keep this above ground. It's not going to be up in the map where you can see it. It's going to be below the map, therefore, I'm still going to need this, and I'm going to get and place it where... We generally are going to be parking our truck, which is right over here. And then the only thing is you want to make sure that little blue corner, which you see there on the right, is facing the direction you want it to be facing in, which in this case is that direction. That is essentially going to end up replacing this. So at the end of the match, or the match of the challenge, uh, It should automatically put the truck right in that spot. If everything goes according to plan. And that's where we want it to start anyway, so we'll start it out there. Okay. Um, what else do we need here? We need another button. This one's going to go back here. And guess what this one's going to do? I'll bet you can figure it out. New logic connection. When this is pressed, it's going to clear. New logic connection. When this is pressed, and we're going to have to do this 12 times. You guessed it.
And there we can see it. All 12 will be cleared with this one push of a button. So we're gonna need that for a couple of different reasons. A, to make sure that they're all up and ready. So we're gonna start right here. New logic connection when the invite is accepted. We're gonna press that button, which is going to activate all of the replayers so that they'll be ready to go once everything else starts kicking in. So here we go. Now for right now, obviously I'm going to leave all the logic above ground because we're in the testing phase. Once everything is done and worked out, I'll put it below surface and then I will also fill in um, the terrain up here with, I don't know what yet, I haven't figured that part out. Maybe uh, Arendelle's castle or something like that, I don't know, we'll figure something. Okay, first challenge. <laughs> I just jumped in the truck. And nothing has happened. Let's figure out why. Well, clearly there's no logic going to it. I thought we connected it. Let's try it again. New logic connection. Whenever entered... I really feel like we did this, but okay. Start the game. Let's try it again. Oh, there we go. Okay, here we go. So all the snow banks should be cleared as we are looking to find them now. We need to get to 20. Here's one. And I already know another problem. We never set the counters to work with the replayers, but everything else is working. So let's just run through this real quick and see what happens. Um, I'm also not seeing... I'm also not seeing the time. So we're going to have to check on that. There's another... What's that? About three? We'll go this way. Whoopsie. That works. <laughs> I'm really liking the way the snowbanks are doing their thing, though. That's that's definitely going the right direction. And now you can see there's more of them, and it gets a little bit easier as time goes by because where you couldn't find too many early on, now there's a few. Whoop, wrong way. one there's one yeah like I said now we just pick up a bunch of them in a row okay so we've got some issues here to address and that's what we do that's why it's called testing let me get uh, end challenge Okay, let's go over a couple of things here. New logic connection. When the game starts, we need to start the clock. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that didn't happen. Everything else did work accordingly. Um put this here for just a few moments. Oh, 
This is just here during the testing phase because we have to reset a few things. Once it's up and running, we'll get rid of this button. And if we hit that one... Ah. Missed. There we go. That'll take care of all of our snowbanks. They are now all gone. Okay, so now... I guess we should have thought about that, huh? Um, how we want to do this. What I believe will work is if we go here, new logic connection, whenever it is cleared, we'll increment by one. Let's drag this over here, make it a little bit easier for us. New logic connection. When it's cleared, we're going to increment by one. And we're going to keep doing this all the way down the line, and I'll be back when it's done. Okay, so now, all 12 of those, when they are cleared, will increment one on the scoreboard. Now, I just want to make sure of a couple of things first. The scoreboard won't go into effect. Or let me rephrase. The scoreboard will be cleared. Let's go this way. I have to make sure that the scoreboard is cleared before the game starts, but at the same time, we have this button clearing everything. Challenge maker, when the invite is accepted. So we don't want that to actually go onto the scoreboard if you understand what I'm concerned about. So the invite's accepted, then we clear. So then we want to make sure that when the game starts, that that is cleared. And then we should be starting from a point of zero. That should work. I say should. All right, trucks over here. In essence, it should put us over at that spot over there, so I'm not going to worry too much about its placement at this moment. But we're going to give it another whack here and see if that has fixed our dilemma. Start challenge. See, it's got 12 already, but I think it just reset it. That was my concern right there, though. And we'll, yes, we're back to zero. We're good. And we have two minutes. There is no right way or wrong way. You're just clearing roads, so you want to go to the left or to the right. It's completely up to you on this. There's one. But it gave me five, six. Okay, here's another concern. Seven. Why would it have been there? I've got an idea, but I'm not sure. Yeah, you see how it's going up? It's reading the empty trigger areas. And that's a problem. 
We're, and I was thinking that that might be, but uh, for some reason I wasn't sure. Because there was nothing for it to clear until it spawned in, so I thought it wouldn't be an issue. So this is going to require a little more thinking here. I can tell you right now, I think 20 is going to be a pretty uh, luscious number because even with it going through all these trigger boxes and getting free credits, essentially, I don't know that we're going to hit 20. Got it. Yeah, we're not going to hit 20, because like I said... I got credit for a lot of stuff that I didn't actually clear. I'm thinking somewhere between 10 and... Oof, I think 15 will be tight, too. All right, so... This causes a whole other dilemma. And this one's going to take a little bit more time to work on. Because what we now have to do... is we have to deactivate all of those boxes that aren't in use. Um, it's doable, but man, that's going to be a pain. And I'm going to go ahead and repark the truck. See, it's like giving me credit right there for one, things like that. <laughs> Not a bad job of parking there, Olaf. Okay. Um, all in all, I mean, a lot of it does work properly. So let's let's go ahead and hit on some of the stuff that we know has to be tweaked, which right now. We know the score has to come down. We're going to set it. Set a 20. We're going to go with 12. Which still might be a little ambitious, but that's what we're going to go with. Okay. Wow, is this going to be time consuming? Okay, what we're going to end up having to do, and I'm not going to bore you with it i will show you what we're going to do though we know this is our first one here right so what we're going to end up having to do is i'm going to use yeah another button and again this one that's that one right there is going to be temporary this one's going to end up being part of the game and what this button is going to do is deactivate all of those new logic connection when it's pressed It will deactivate. And I'm going to have to go around the entire map and do that. Okay. Then at the same time, because I, again, I know that this is for that box. New logic connection. When it goes to playback, we have to activate the box. Otherwise, it ain't going to work. And we're going to have to do that for each and every one of those 12 snowdrifts. So, in the interest of time, I'll see you on the other side. Okay, and we're back. So, took a lot of doing, but all 12 replayers now are set that when they go into replay, which means that they're going to put one of the snow drifts up on the road, they will also activate the corresponding trigger box at the same time. And new thought just entered my mind. Hold on a second. I'm now wondering. Once we've removed the snow block, has it deactivated? And I don't think it has. Let me get back to you on that. Hold on. Okay, so the last step, I hope, 
And, and there are other ways of doing this, I am sure. I, uh, this is the way that I'm thinking of right now in my mind. I am sure that there's probably a logic gate thing that'll do some of this. Uh, but I'm not positive on that, and I know this will work. It's just going to be a little more time-consuming. So what I've just done now, again, I know that that's my first block right there, is I set this up now where when I... Go to my logic connection, and it clears. So it's been respawned in, okay? The randomizer selected this one. It's up on the board. You drive through, you clear it. That will then, once again, turn off that trigger area so that you're not driving back a few moments later where it hasn't respawned yet. Each time it respawns, what we just did moments ago was tell it to put it live and it should go live again. So I'm going to have to go down all 12 and do the same thing in reverse, which is basically tell it to turn off once it clears. And I'll be back. All right, so just to show you exactly what this looks like now, we're going to play this one back, which means it'll be the only one on the board. This way you know you're doing the right one. And it's the third one over. Because sometimes when they're all together like this, it could get a little tough to tell. We're going to pull up the logic. And our new logic connection says that when it's cleared. Now we have to find the one that's on the map, and it's this one here. We want to deactivate it. And then we're going to go all the way down the line and do that. Okay, this is the last one right here. We're going to put it in playback. Everything else is off. And just make sure you're getting the right one each time because that'll mess things up. Going to go to our logic connection. When it's cleared, and it should be just back here. Here we go. We'll deactivate. Okay, so now, in theory, <laughs> we should be good to go and have a reasonable score. Uh, another thought I had, and might as well just try this out now and see how it works. So we drop down here to our gameplay toys. We're going to get the sound effect machine. And place that over here. And what I'm thinking, I don't know if there is a good sound effect for it. We'll find out. But the new logic connection is... When the count changes... Um... Let's see. I want a sound effect basically for the snow plow removing the snow. So some sort of a thuddy type noise sound effect. Let's see. Splash. Ugh. I mean, almost could work. There's something better. Could almost use the vintage horn, I suppose, but... Foghorn might sound a little bit more like a truck horn. Uh, you know what, let's, well, before we say Foghorn, let me see what else we got here. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I thought there were going to be options of destruction. 
Uh, what the heck, for now, let's just try it and see how it goes. We might get rid of it anyway if it's not going to work out right. So properties uh, at speaker or locator off because we want it to be in general. And if it does, timing-wise, uh, the sound effect has to be somewhat reasonable. And if it's not, then I'll just get rid of it. And if I don't like that one, I'll switch it to another one if it does work out. Let's go ahead and save. Because a lot of work has been done. <laughs> uh, what just happened? <laughs> Okay, I've got an idea. <laughs> uh, you're killing me, Smalls. Because we cleared. Hmm, let's see. First, let's go back here. Let's remove it from the bridge. Well, I shouldn't have done that. That was a mistake. I think, anyway. Let's see. When the invite is accepted, we want to reset. That is accurate. Starts. Do we want to reset it again? Let's just do it when the game starts. It resets. Let's see if that works. fix that. Let's see how everything else is doing now. Thus far, zero snowdrifts. And 12 is the target we're looking for, but we're not getting any free points. That's good. There's a snow bank. Good. Gave us credit for two. I don't know why. That's three. Like I said, it'll be a little easier as the game progresses because now more have had a chance to spawn. There's that sound effect. That's not a snowbank. I mean, it is a snowbank, but it's not one of the collectible ones. There's six with a minute left to go. There's seven. So the sound effect is working time-wise where I want it to be. There's eight. Nine, let's see up here. There's 10. There's 11. I was just going to say, maybe it's too easy for that, but I think 12 might end up being the right number. And we got it, although it didn't stop the game and give us the victory. Why? All right, well, the number 12 is reasonable. Woo! That was
was tougher than I thought. Okay, we just need to check out what happened with that part. Uh, but that'll be an easy fix, so let's go jump in there real quick. New logic connection when the target is reached. Complete the game. I'm not sure how I missed that step, but okay. Um, the sound effect works. Now the only question is, is there a better sound effect? Ground pound force field pulse punch slap. Not feeling any of that. Let's try. give it an air horn type effect since it's supposed to be a snowplow truck type vehicle. They generally use air horns, so we'll go ahead and put him back over here. And again, you can tweak the count and or the time any way you want. So if you think it's not enough of a challenge, you can drop it down to maybe, uh, I don't know, a minute or whatever works for you. Or you can change how many you've got to collect and make that a higher number so that it's tougher to get it done. As you see, and as I said earlier, it gets a little easier as the time goes by because now they've had a chance to spawn a few more. Probably, let me see. No. Let's reset the gameplay. I'm not sure why I'm having to do that. <laughs> and it didn't work anyway. <laughs> I wonder what the issue is. It's like it's not saving the command. Uh, odd. All right, new logic connection whenever entered. Start game. So what I'll do then is just save this. Just a reminder to everybody, December 19th, we're going to have a big event going on throughout the YouTube universe here. A lot of creators are getting together and are going to have some special content released all on the 19th. I'm sure the times will be staggered about. Uh, I haven't heard the details on that part. Mine will go at 8 a.m. And that will be The Last Mandalorian. I invite you guys to stop out and check it out. That's 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time depending on whereabouts you're at. And there we go. That's pretty obnoxious. And... Once again, what is the issue? We fixed that already. The 
frustration <laughs> is part of this game. Presses that button to clear everything. When the invite is accepted, okay. So now the scoreboard. Target reached. Reset, so that's correct. If it's resetting. Started. That should be right because the other one's on the invitation, which gives you that extra step in between. So on the invitation, yes, we hit all the clears, and that's going to put it up at 12, which right there is the win. Let's go this route. Let's change it to 13. The reason I went with 13 is even if it has the old number still in there and hasn't cleared it out yet, which there's no reason that that should be the case, um, it wouldn't be an automatic win. Plus, we needed it to be a little tougher anyway because we got done with like 30 seconds left. See how it had the 12 there? Now it should be clearing it right now. There we go. Okay. That makes sense. So then 13 will be the number. Or any number bigger than the number of replayers that you're using. So we have that ominous air horn letting the kids know that Snowplow Man is coming to get them back to school. Minute and 14 to go. Whoops. There'll be trees and stuff there once this is all done to make sure that kind of mistake doesn't happen.
48 seconds left. Now it's getting a little bit easier, but time is definitely working against us. That's eight. Uh-oh, that could be a problem. That one has to be checked on. Oh, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Here we go. And it didn't give us the win, though. What happened with that part? Okay, well, we got a couple of challenges that we got to take a look at and tweak up a little bit. And at least this time it's still working from this aspect. Let's make sure that that score thing isn't an issue again. Uh, yeah. Alright, we'll try one more time here. The 12 again as everything was just cleared. And now we're good. Okay. So we have one snowbank that didn't want to cooperate. I'm going to have to check into that. Wasn't sure if that was the one. Huh. Sorry. Two. And it's also not giving us the win when we get our 12, so I got to check on what's going on with that. Oh, it's 13 now. That's why. Dummy. So I did not complete that last one. But that wasn't my fault. That block didn't work out the way it was supposed to. Gave me credit for one that it shouldn't have. And I have a funny feeling that two things are going to be tied together. I think I might have linked the wrong ones. So that's going to take a little hunt and peck. Time is running out, though. Ten, eleven, twelve. Come on, give me one more. Well, that wasn't a smart idea. Four seconds. No. Oh, I got it. <laughs> I, I was trying to hit the turbo. <laughs> I jumped out, but the truck ran through it, so that qualifies. All right. That's it, folks. It works. I do have to figure out. I do have to figure out which ones are not cooperating properly and figure out how I accidentally wired them wrong. But aside from that, and that, uh, that one that would not cooperate before didn't do it again. Probably should have took better notice of it. And note to self, next time don't jump out of the car at the end. And by the way, this is a pretty good time limit. Uh, the minute and a half with 13 and 12 repeaters is actually working out pretty good. And again, this is where I got to start taking notes. So,
And there we go. With 26 seconds left. So who knows, maybe you won't even bring that number up to 15. Again, you can tweak it any way you want, but uh, with the exception of having to figure out one or two trigger areas, it's working, it's playing the way it's supposed to play, and that's going to conclude this edition of Under Construction. This has been Snow Day. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, make sure you click that like button down below. Share on social media if you like. Have a very Merry Christmas. I'm sure I'll be on before then. But in the meantime, I remind you as I do each so and every time. So many amazing things rhyme with cuddle. Like, um, and, um, and also, hmm. Okay, that was kind of random. All right, guys, we'll be back again next time right here on All Night Gaming with Disney Infinity, and we will once again be under construction. I remind you, Disney Infinity is the game where the only limitation is your imagination. See you real soon.